All right, welcome church to another awesome Sunday in service as we gather. Find your seats as we kick off with now we'll call upon the Lord. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. My dear, she put W U B C, Ohana, remembering you with joy, warm wishes for a Merry Christmas. You all looked so happy and joyful in the new church. Wish we were there too. Thank you, Debbie, for the picture. May the Lord be with each one of you as you serve Him. Terioka in Michigan. All right. The other announcements are listed to the right of your bulletin, so if you um, want to follow through with me, I'm going to skip some of them as they're repeated announcements or prayer requests, um, but I'm going to try and highlight on some important ones. Um, we, I just wanted to say again thank you to um, Uncle Bob and Auntie Malene Martin um, for donating the new temporary church sign outside. And there's some other people that I wanted to thank, um, Uncle Dennis, Shigeta, George, and Ann Inaba. And that's for helping the distribution of the gravel. So if you noticed before, when you used to enter, there was like a dip right by the um, side of this door over here. So they filled the gravel here and in the front of the church um, and around the sanctuary. So I just wanted to say thank you. Um, for providing safer walkways for us and areas. And it also makes the church look a lot nicer too. Um, additional thanks to Norman Fukuhara, um, retiring State Farm Insurance Agency located on Wainuinui Avenue for miscellaneous donations of some church equipment that we received as well. Um, if you go down to the prayer requests, Oh, and I also wanted to let you know that um, Sunday School Classes has resumed as of today at 9 a.m. Um, so we will be continuing the Sunday School Classes um, in the weeks following. So please check our bulletin for times um, of the classes that we will be having. 
Um, if you can add to your prayer requests listed at the bottom there, um, Auntie Debbie Nakaji, if you can pray for her, um, because she's without her meds right now, and she's still waiting to get them from the pharmacy. So um, as you all know, it's really important for her. Um, and we also still have uncle um, in Kalihi in the um, hospital there, or the rehab recovery. So if you can continue um, for their prayers as well, for healing. Um, also pray for God's guidance for our church deacons, our pastor search committee, the property and facilities management committee, and all involved in the work of the church. Um, as you know, we have a leak in our water line right now. So if you can pray um, that we will have a solution for that very soon as we're working to repair that issue. Um, also, I wanted to ask for prayers for my sister-in-law, Sao. And I think I'm going to have Lusa um, kind of give some detail on this prayer request. God is good. Um, as we just uh, praise and just thank you for, every, for all the prayer warriors, uh, for all your prayers. Um, just talked to my sister this morning. She is at Queens Hospital. They were able to take her in uh, when they flew her up uh, this Thursday from American Samoa. So, um, praise God. Um, she's doing really well. Um, they uh, were able to um, do what they needed to do with uh, her. Um, she had some kidney stone problems and stuff like that. So, um, you know, she's uh, in really good spirits. So, thank you everybody for all your prayers. Um, is there any other concerns? I don't know if you guys see this wonderful object to my left over here, that big thing over there. You know, God works in mysterious ways. I mean, and this church is just one of those churches that works in God's timing, but it also moves. When it's time to move, it moves. We have individuals that are willing to move a mountain with the, with the, the guidance of God. Um, this wonderful Yamaha piano uh, that you see over here uh, was donated by this lovely lady next to me. Um, and Karen is such a blessing to the worship team. She's just a uh, go, 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 go. Sometimes you gotta pull her back and uh, <laughs> say, hey, 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 we gotta slow down, slow, slow, slow down. Sometimes they gotta remind her, it's like, hey, to go fast, we gotta go slow. Um, but, um, Too slow for me. Praise God that, um, you know, we have uh, just another uh, portion of worship to enhance his message, so. Um, if we can uh, list the piano in today's service, I'm going to kick it back to you. All right. Um, we also have some other prayer requests as you look at the bottom there for some um, recoveries from disasters. We already have so many deaths this year, I can't believe it. Like this year, I think. Not only um, famous people that we know, like Dan Kalekiri, you know, and just um, just a number of people. So please keep all of their family members in prayer. I also wanted to give you an update on Noah Pila. For those that were praying for him, um, he did come back home, which I announced. Um, but they did get the test back, and he does have stage four cancer. So if you folks can continue to pray for him and his family as they start to plan out. Um, their next steps in that but thank you for your um, prayers he's in really good spirits he's a great kid very positive vibes coming from both him and his mom so um, just continue prayers um, for them as they go through this chapter all right so let us bow our heads in prayer all right heavenly father dear lord we thank you um, so much for all that you continue to do dear lord and as we come here today to Praise your name, worship you, dear Lord, that we put you first in all that we do. We pray that you continue to um, just help us, dear Lord, through each and every day. For those that are um, dealing with financial situations at this time, dear Lord, um, illnesses in their family, um, just problems abroad, dear Lord, or just needing to know you, dear Lord, we pray that... Um, you will make it possible for them to be touched um, by a fellow Christian, dear Lord, that they may hear the good news. And so, Lord, we pray that as we begin our service today, that you be with um, Uncle Dan as he gives his message. And we also pray for the rest of our praise group, 
for all those, dear Lord, that um, helped to make this um, program exist, dear Lord, and especially for those that come freely and worship um, your name. So we pray as we lift this day up to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Ready to worship, ready to be fulfilled, ready to get those cups reloaded and rejuvenated. All right, please rise and join us as we sing He Lives, because He definitely lives always.
wrap up this portion of worship as we prepare for his word um, in the spirit song. Thanksgiving, sometimes even before then, to not see ads or like Louisa hear Christmas carols at work. Um, and it's a constant theme of giving 
very nice things, often expensive things. Sometimes maybe we even get a little cheaper, but giving, giving and receiving material gifts. Gifts that <clears throat> are often uh, things that people need or want, but are material gifts. Our stores, many of them, this is the break or make time of the year. Uh, many of them, this is the time they make their profit. And for many of us, it's a break or make time of our personal budget. Some people way over expend and suffer the consequences of that. We all know there's different types of gifts. There's a practical gift, clothes, kitchen appliances, things of that nature. There's gifts that we want somebody to do something or something they're interested in. We give a child a soccer ball or a baseball glove or a bat or we give somebody a jersey for their, fav their favorite football team and those kind of gifts. We also give sometimes just amazing gifts, a car, you see ads on TV about people giving somebody a car or a trip or something like that. And then we also get gifts that we can't wait to return or we give next year. And so we, there's all these types of gifts. But what was the greatest gift? We just celebrated Christ's birth. And that to me is the greatest gift that we ever got. Is God gave his one and only son for our salvation. Because we had a, we have a problem. As Paul writes in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But there's an answer to that. The answer is in John 3.16, most of us know that. For God loved the world in this way. He gave his one and only Son, so everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. So we all have, all have that gift, that gift of Christ, that gift of His grace, the gift of His salvation for us, and the gift of His life. But that's not what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about the individual gifts that each one of us has, that the God gives to each one of us that God gives every believer a gift. They're not all the same, but they're for the same purpose, which is the building up of the church, the helping of other people. And so, we all have the gift of Christ, but we all have gifts from God, individual gifts to God, for us. And they're not for our own purposes, but for the building up of others. At this time, I'm going to open us for a bit of prayer. Dear Lord, be with us as we come to study your word. Study the words that Paul wrote so many years ago. Show how it means so much to us today. Lord, open our minds and our hearts to the message. In your son's name I pray, amen. Can I ask you to stand for a moment while I read? the scripture verses that we're going to be studying. And this is from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We're going to be studying verses 4 to 11. Now there are different gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different ministries, but the same Lord. And there are different activities, but the same God produces each gift in, each gift in each person. A manifestation of the Spirit is given to each person for the common good. To one is given the message of wisdom, through the Spirit to another message of knowledge, of the same Spirit to another faith, by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing, by the one Spirit, to another the performing of miracles, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another interpreting tongues. One and the same Spirit is active in all of these, distributing to each person as he will. Thank you for standing. You can now be seated.
So what is Paul saying? In essence, we all receive gifts, spiritual gifts from the Lord. These gifts are not all the same. They're all different. As he goes on later on in chapter 12, he talks about the body, trying to explain to people that the congregation is made up of different people that have different gifts. He uses the body, talking about eyes and ears and feet, showing that all these things are important. That all we have is we have different gifts, and, we, and these gifts are for the common good of all of us. They're freely given to us by God because of our belief in, in Jesus Christ. And God has given them to us to strengthen our congregation, strengthen others. So what, did, what is he saying? There are different gifts but the same spirit. Another way of interpreting the Greek is different allotments, different uh, <clears throat> different things given to people, different uh, gifts are from God. And who determines what gifts we get? Do we determine what gifts we get? We might pray for them, but God determines. It's God's sovereign will that determines which gift we get. And they're not built, meant for our own self. They're meant for us helping somebody else. Helping the body of Christ. They all come from the same God. There is diversity in unity. We're one group. He goes on later in chapter 12 again talking about the body, how all of that make up the body of Christ. But we already have the example of diversity and un unity in our triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Three separate entities making up one unity. And so I'm part of the body, Karen's part of the body, Jim's part of the body, Dennis is part of the body. We all make up the body of Christ. They're we're all one as in the body of Christ, but we all are separate. So there's that diversity and unity. Again, where do the where do the gifts come from? They come from God. They come to us to help build up the body of Christ. And it's God's sovereignty that gives us the gifts. We do not determine what gifts we get. God determines that. We might not like the gift we got because it might stretch our feeling of what we can do or what we should be doing. We might not like that gift, but that is the gift God gives us. <laughs> I see somebody smiling over there. <laughs> we all know that. Sometimes it makes us uncomfortable to have to be able to manifest the gift that God is telling us we need to be doing. Uh, it makes us step out of our comfort zone sometimes. And so God has given us the gifts. My commentators like the word edify, for the edification of uh, the body of Christ. And what edify? means is the building up, the making better, the strengthening, and that's what these gifts are for. Spiritual gifts are always meant to be given, to be used. You get a gift, and you're not supposed to sit on it. You're actually supposed to use it. And you're supposed to use it again for the building up of the common good. Gifts are not given to you to, to make your life better. It's given to you to make somebody else's life better. And <clears throat> gifts are gifts. 
Gifts are given freely. We don't earn the gift of, from God. We, have, we don't get it because we want it. We don't get it because we desire it. We get it because God decides that we should have that gift and we should be doing that gift. And sometimes it's hard to know what our gifts are. Sometimes we have to pray about it. Sometimes we have to try and, and go out and do something to see if that's what God is wanting us to do. But that means that we have to use the gift that we are given. The center idea of this whole passage is in 7. Where he says, for the common good. The gifts are given for the common good. They're not given for our own individual enjoyment, improvement, edification. It's given for the improvement, the enjoyment, and the edification of all of us. He goes on and lists a number of gifts. This, this list is not exhaustive. It's, it's just examples. And I'll go through some of them and try to explain what he's talking about. But the important thing is that he has a number of lists in the Bible. You can look at 1 Corinthians 12, 18, 13, 1 to 3, also in Romans 12, 6 to 8, and Ephesians 4, 11 to 12. There's only one gift in all the same lists, all these lists, and that's prophecy. All the, all the lists have other different things. So what he's say, saying is this list I'm talking to you about now is not exhaustive. There's all kinds of gifts that God gives us. And, and so don't get hung up with, do I get one of these that he's talking about? Because there's other gifts that he gives us. Again, everyone has a gift. And all gifts are for the service of, of the common good. Then we'll talk a little bit about what he's talking about. He says, a message of wisdom, a message of knowledge. And another interpretation would be words of wisdom and words of knowledge. In the Jewish literature, these are usually commingled to mean teaching. And so words of wisdom, words of knowledge, really talking about understanding the gospel and being able to teach it. And so that's a gift that we would hope our pastor has, our Sunday school teachers, but some degree, maybe a good number of us have that ability to explain the gospel to somebody else. So that's what he's saying here. That gift is the gift of being able to express the gospel to other people. And not words, wisdom of words, which would be clever speech, which obviously I don't have. Um, but <clears throat> these are usually things of the mouth, things of the tongue. And a number of the gifts he's going to be talking about that are things as of from the, uh, being able to speak. Gifts of faith. Do they not all have gifts of faith? Yes, we all have the gift of faith as part of our salvation, but what he's talking about here is a, a <clears throat> exceptional faith that leads the congregation to uh, trying or uh, circumstances. I think we should all hope that some of us have that with what's going on with our congregation that we need people to have faith and lead us through our current circumstances. Gifts of healings and miracles. In the Greek it's plural and nobody really understands what he's talking about here. Um, but 
again, he's not being exhaustive in his list of gifts. Uh, healings might have been actually what he's, what we usually think about is healings, helping people recover from some illness or injury. Miracles, well, just setting up a church in Corinth would have been a miracle. But what actually miracles he's talking about, uh, we don't really know. And that's sometimes the case with with the Bible. It's not always a complete answer to everything. Gifts of the Spirit, that was basically being able to determine false and true spirits. The gifts of prophecy, what is he talking about? This is the one gift that he mentions in each one of the gifts. Now, what do we usually think of as prophecy? Well, I know the numbers for the mega lottery, so I'm going to be a billionaire. <laughs> or I know, you know, <clears throat> what the score of my favorite football team is going to be, or do I know what the stock market is going to be? What's going to happen? That's usually what we currently think of as prophecy, but that's not what they meant back then. One way of thinking of prophecy, the way they thought about it, is pastoral teaching. The ability of the pastor or somebody in the church to understand the needs and concerns and the way people thought so they could express to them the gospel in a way that they could understand. is being able to reveal the gospel to people in a way that they could understand it. And that's what they meant by prophecy back then. Not that I'm going to go out and put the numbers in and, and win the mega lottery, which every once in a while we see it, that on the TV, it's, you know, hundred million dollars. Uh, but the ability to understand Lance, understand his concerns, and find the language that he can hear from me, that, un that he can understand the gospel. And that's what he meant by prophecy, that being able to reveal to people the gospel. And that's why he thought it was so important. Isn't that important? That the ability to be able to express the gospel, because to be honest about it, unless you have been a believer for a long time, sometimes it really, it doesn't make sense. Some of this doesn't make sense in a secular, worldly point of view. Why would somebody sacrifice themselves for somebody else? That doesn't really make any sense. Why would God want to sacrifice his son for people that didn't love him to begin with? Does that make any sense at all? I wouldn't sacrifice my son for somebody over in Russia. I'm not going to do that. But God did. And so, this is, doesn't make sense to a lot of people. Being able to express, express the gospel to people so they can understand that's what they're talking about here. Paul spends a lot of time in his writings talking about tongues, which were a big deal to the churches back then. And there are basically two types of tongues. The one, ability to speak another language, or at the time of the Holy Ghost coming to the, to the disciples in Jerusalem, they were able to speak languages that they didn't know and express the gospel. So it's expressing a human language that they didn't know to begin with so that they again could spread the gospel. The Roman world had lots and lots of people moving around. So a city like Corinth, would have people speaking lots of different languages. So it would have been important to be able to express the gospel in other languages. The other way they looked at tongues is the heavenly language coming down. And there was a lot of problems with that because a lot of times people didn't understand that. And so it's important to be able to have somebody be able to interpret what somebody was saying. As Paul also writes, that without that interpretation, that utterance is, is meaningless. So what do we do about all this? What do we do 
with our spiritual gifts. We all should try to figure out what our spiritual gifts are, and we might have more than one. As he says in 1 Corinthians 12, 31, but desire the greater gifts. We should desire God's gifts to us so that we can build up the church, so we can build up our body of Christ, so we can help others. And so that means asking for a gift, not necessarily a particular gift, but asking God to show to us what our gifts are. Not all the gifts are going to be the same. I'm not going to have the same gifts as Lance or Karen. But all of us need all those gifts to have the full functioning of the church. And so not all gifts are going to be the same. But there's no ranking of the gifts. As Paul goes on later on chapter 12 talking about using the different parts of the body as examples. No particular gift is better or worse than any others. Somebody, we might, in society, think that a certain attribute is better, but what he's saying is they're all from God, they all came from sovereign will for all of us, and they're all important, so there's no one that's better or worse than others. So, in closing, I'm going to say that spiritual gifts are for the common good not for the individual, the building up of the body of Christ. All believers receive gifts from the same source, from God, who determines what gifts that we have. And there's no ranking of the gifts. And so, we all should desire the individual gifts. And they're all going to be different, but they're all going to be useful for the building up of our Church. This time I'm going to ask the prayer praise team to come back up. And I'm going to ask if anybody feels a need to ask about their gift, to ask God, to be, Jesus, to be their Lord and Savior, to come forward. I'll be down here as we're singing our final song, which is Bind Us Together. Because our spiritual gifts are meant to bind us together. And so if you have something you'd like to talk to me about, whether or not it's joining the church, or <clears throat> becoming a Christian, or have something on your mind, keep me down in front.
I was kind of laughing as he was doing a sermon, as he was talking about uh, prophecy. And I prophesied yesterday that the Titans was going to lose. <laughs> and I don't even know football. I just came in and I told you said that, and then I walked away and started making my apple pie because we went to Mauna Kea to pick some apples. And then I came in at the end and I said, so, did they lose? And he goes, yeah. <laughs> I was really upset. <laughs> but, of course, that's not the kind of prophecy we're talking about. A lot of great, interesting... Um, information um, and that message so thank you so much all right we're going to end our service here with the victory chat so we're going to have you um, stand one more time as we end that and then we're going to have Auntie Malin instead of Uncle Liusa or Liusa close us in prayer <laughs> all right team I mean team <laughs> All right, Church Valley, uh, let's sing Victory and Chad. <laughs> Sorry, I feel like I'm at work. <laughs>